This is a model of a papillomavirus which has been ray traced. Ray tracing provides a high degree of realism because it simulates the way light bounces off an object into the viewer's eyes. This model is made up of 3D geometric shapes such as spheres and dodecahedrons. It takes us about six minutes per frame to make this image. Our computations are done on an AT&T Pixel machine. They would take about 500 times longer on a 386 PC. Ray tracing simulates light by bouncing rays of light around the scene like they were billiard balls. This allows for a good representation of important optical details such as shadows, reflections, and refractions. Basically, it lets you see better. This type of fractal is called a quaternion Julia set. It is produced by a simple equation, z equals z squared plus k, which feeds its output back into its input many times. The result shown here is the map of the behavior of an equation which cannot be represented by a simple combination of geometric objects, such as in the papillomavirus shown earlier. We have developed new ray tracing techniques to see fractal objects better. As we zoom in on geometric primitives like plane spheres and dodecahedrons, the view becomes simpler and simpler since geometry of this type can specify detail at only one level. As we zoom in on fractal objects, the view does not simplify since fractal geometry specifies infinite detail. This is a feature of fractals that is of high interest because many natural phenomena such as weather also have meaningful detail on all scales. The basic geometry behind ray tracing has been understood by artists for a long time. Of course, what's important about this image is not the reclining nude, but the grid. In the designer of the Lion Woman by Durer, the draftsman is sighting a ray through the grid to the Lion Woman. This is exactly what is happening in ray tracing. The ray tracer simulates the behavior of light by casting a ray from the eye through the grid out into the space to be ray traced. It has to cast a ray through every element of the grid. On the computer, these elements are called pixels. There are a lot of pixels used to represent an image, at least a quarter of a million, and in many cases, millions of pixels. For each pixel, quite a bit of computation has to be done. This is why ray tracing takes so long. The first piece of computation is to calculate the intersection of the ray with the object to be ray traced. After that, a tangent plane is calculated so that the ray can be bounced properly with an angle equal to the angle which the ray comes into the object. Fractals are monstrous to ray trace. There is no known equation for the intersection of a line and a fractal. And also, fractals are infinitely rough, so there is no flat area to calculate a tangent plane to properly bounce the ray. At EVL, we have been developing new techniques to ray trace these monstrous objects. One could ray trace a fractal object by making very small steps along the ray and iterating z equals z squared plus k hundreds or thousands of times at each step. Small steps are necessary to not miss small details. This is a very slow process. We probably don't want to wait for the results. Eventually, it'll get to the fractal object. For some fractals, we can estimate the distance from any point along the ray to the fractal object. The distance estimate is indicated by blue spheres. At any step, we know the fractal to be outside, not inside the blue spheres. Therefore, we can step along the ray by the radius of the sphere, calculate a new distance estimate, and step by that radius. Although this is not as fast as calculating the intersection of a ray with simple objects, it is much faster than stepping along the ray by tiny steps. After we find the point of intersection, we need to calculate the angle between the incoming ray and the fractal object. We do this by surrounding the point of intersection with a three-dimensional grid. At each cell of the three-dimensional grid, we calculate the distance to the fractal object. Here, lightness indicates distance. Cells opposite the center of the grid are subtracted. Those differences are added together to find out an angle which is away from the fractal object. Perpendicular to that line, we construct the tangent plane and bounce the ray. We use these techniques to visualize at high quality mathematical objects that have never been seen before.